Okay, welcome back everybody. Thank you once again for joining me. This is Rachel bringing you a chapter a day. Today we are going to look at Genesis chapter 9. And yesterday we saw Genesis chapter 8, how God remembered Noah and caused the rains to cease on the earth and also caused the water to subside so that he, his family and the animals that were with him in the ark could go out and start a new beginning all over again. So I want, I want to encourage you to go back and watch that video if you have not yet done so. And I want to really welcome everybody who is coming for the very first time on this platform. I am so happy that you are here and I thank you so much for joining us. <clears throat> this is a chapter a day and you are on my channel Moments of Blaze or Blissful Moments. Thank you so very much. I want you to encourage this channel. Go ahead and subscribe and encourage your friends and family members to subscribe also to this channel so that together we can study the word of god and grow our faith in him you remember the bible says that the knowledge of the glory of god shall fill the earth in the latter days as the waters cover the sea so today i want you to join me on this channel join me on this platform let's make the word of god the standard for our lives as we grow in knowledge of it so we are going to look at Genesis chapter 9 and I'd like you to read with me <clears throat> as we go all right so God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth on every bird of the air on all that move on the earth and on all fish of the sea they are given unto your hand every moving thing that lives shall be shall be food for you i have given you all things even as the green herbs so here god is explaining to them that <clears throat> they shall no longer have only green herbs for food like it was in the beginning when he created the heavens and the earth because remember as we read in the previous chapters that god had blessed them and commanded them that they should eat every herb every fruit tree and everything shall be for food even the animals all the animals the wild animals the carnivorous animals that we have nowadays did not used to eat flesh before they all ate the green herbs that god god had made or that god had given them for food so <clears throat> here in this um chapter 9 verse 3 we see how after the great flood happened the rules are now changing god is now giving them new rules and new laws so here is the very first one that he gave that the animals shall fear human beings and that human beings shall have animals just as they have the green vegetables and green fruits green trees for food they shall also have animals now for food and animals shall fear them so don't be don't be surprised when you go close to an animal and it runs away from you or when you say why animal they run away that is just normal the fear that god had placed on the animals for man okay <clears throat> because they also know that man is going to have them for food so they always try to run away and escape from man so verse 3 again every moving thing that lives shall be food for you i have given you all things even as the green herbs but you shall not eat flesh with its life with its life that is its blood it means that we must kill an animal and let its blood flow out before we can have it from it we cannot eat animals that have their blood still inside of it this is where god gave the commandment surely for your life blood i will demand a reckoning from the hand of every beast i will require it and from the hand of man from the hand of every man's brother i will require the life of the man so here god is saying that he's going to judge every animal any animal that kills a human being god is going to require the blood of that man from the from that beast and the same with other human beings that take the life of other human beings we are not supposed to take the life of no other human beings because we are not able to give life to anything so god is saying that if you kill somebody they are going to demand the blood of that person from your hands and you don't want to be in that position that the creator of life is demanding from your hands the life of somebody else but what is even the need why take something that you cannot give why take a life that you cannot give what if it was your own life that was about to be taken or taken like that 
So that's what we're supposed to consider. And we see here how God is saying it. Surely for your life, Lord, I will demand a reckoning. From the hand of every beast, I will require it. And from the hand of man, for, from the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of man. Whoever shed man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made man. As And as for you, be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth. And multiply in it then God spoke to Noah and to his sons okay let's read verse 8 again I'm sorry for that then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him saying and as for me behold I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with <clears throat> every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you. Of all that go out of the ark, every beast of the earth. Thus, I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said... This is the sign of my covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the clouds and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the clouds. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow shall be, <coughs> excuse me, the rainbow shall be in the clouds and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenants between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah and from these the whole earth was populated and Noah began to be a farmer and he planted a vineyard then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent and Ham the father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father and told his brothers outside but Shem and Japheth took a garment laid it on their soldier and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father their faces were turned away and they did not see their father's nakedness so noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him then he said cursed be canaan a servant of servants he shall be to his brethren and he said Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years, so all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. Wow, he lived almost as old as Methuselah. But the years of Methuselah were 969 years and that was the record, world record of the oldest man that ever lived. Alright, so we have just seen um, Genesis chapter 9 and we have seen how God made a covenant between himself and Noah and how he promised never to destroy the earth again with a flood by... He's uh, putting his rainbow in the sky. He he reminds himself and also reminds us of that covenant. But it's not only going to end there. We are going to see a lot of things that are going to change. And 
hopefully he was hoping that the world is going to become a peaceful place and that wickedness will not grow and enlarge again upon the world but that was not the case and then there is something else i want to show you here it says that this this in verse 19 it says that these three were the sons of noah and from this the whole earth was populated so there is there is a relationship that exists between all the peoples of the earth okay we all came from one big family the family of noah from the three sons of shem ham of and of japheth and if you did not come from the family of one you came from the family of the other so we all came from this great human family that was saved from the earth so all these things about oh we don't belong to this one or this one doesn't belong here or this one doesn't look like this one or that one doesn't look like that other one i think that if we have knowledge about what the word of god is telling us all these things are not going to even exist because they are not supposed to exist we are one great human family we are not animals we are not beasts we are humans and all of us came from these three survivors these three sons that survived the flood and from their wives so it is very important for us to keep up with the word of the lord because it gives us peace and it gives us understanding when you have understanding of these things like all this issue of racial racial issues will not even be there because we will have knowledge that we are all related in one way or the other even if not not as directly from one mom or one dad but we all came from one big family which had three sons who were saved from the flood okay so that is the one tip that i want to give us today and i want us to keep this in mind if you see that thing rising within you for you to discriminate against one person or the other or for you to begin to see a race as if it is a barrier or the color of a person as if it is a barrier always remember that <clears throat> people can come from the same family but look different people can come from the same family that speak differently people can come from the same family but they you know they are formed differently and that is exactly what happened to our own human family there was a variety that came in it and variety is a beautiful thing so there is no need for us to look at one another and be like oh you don't belong we all belong because we all came from this one great family of noah because every other family upon the earth was destroyed by the flood save for this family and this family birthed the world so it is one big human family the human family the human race not the white race not the black race not the hispanic race or whatever races that you know we have finally separated ourselves by ourselves it's not supposed to be like that it is one big human family the human race so i want to thank you all for keeping up with me and staying with me to this through this chapter and i want you to leave your comments about any other thing else that you learned from this chapter that i picked up from this chapter in the comment section and i want to encourage you to write to me you know write on the comment section so that you know that you're with me or participating with me and i want to thank you so very much for your time and your attention i know that i'll be with you again in the next videos and i want you to stay blessed and stay encouraged because god is up to new and wonderful things for our lives so thank you so very much encourage your friends and your families to subscribe to this channel and you can share far and wide so that the word of god will keep going out thank you so very much and stay blessed i will see you in the next chapter genesis chapter 10 and it's going to get much more interesting as we move along so shalom shalom to you and i love you all god bless you and bye bye